Hey everybody, welcome back again to a new session of A New Way to Museum. I'm Reese Barrick and I'm here today in front of our good friend Megalodon. And we're going to be talking about him a little bit today. So um, if you've been enjoying us and are going to enjoy uh, talking about Megalodon, please don't forget to subscribe and like and because uh, we appreciate it a whole lot and we like seeing uh, all the all the cool people from all around the country that join us every week. So today we're talking about the Meg. All right. So Megalodon is an is an interesting animal. All right. It's a giant shark. Everybody knows it's a giant shark. Uh, matter of fact, I just watched the Meg movie just the other night on TV, and so it brings up some interesting questions about this particular shark. It's kind of fun because, you know, we've got these giant jaws and giant teeth. Megalodon, mega, it basically means giant tooth, all right? So uh, that's the name of the animal. What's really kind of funny about it is that everybody calls it Megalodon. Megalodon's the species name, right? So most animals that are fossils, we call by their genus name, right? We talk about uh, Tyrannosaurus or T-Rex, Rex being the species name. Um, Spinosaurus, most people don't know what the species is of Spinosaurus because we call it Spinosaurus, that's the genus name. Um, we've talked about Mosasaurus, right? People don't know the species name because we usually use the genus name. But for this giant shark, we call it Megalodon, we call it by the species name. That's a little bit odd. It also leads us to issues that people like to capitalize the M for Megalodon, when it's really the species name's got a small M. Kind of a fun, fun fact. Never capitalize the species name when you're writing scientific names of animals. Um, so, so one of the reasons why we call this thing Megalodon is because the genus name is just up in the air, right? This thing was originally related, or, you know, thought to be related to great white sharks today, so they fit into the genus Carcharodon. So it was Carcharodon Megalodon. But then they thought, nope, it's not really Carcharodon, we're going to call it Carcharocles, so put it in a different genus. So it was Carcharocles Megalodon. But then, over the last few years, there's been arguments and said, no, it's not even that. It really should belong in the genus Otodus. So now it's Otodus Megalodon. But because the relations of, of exactly what this animal is has been so argued about over the last 25 years, that we just say, you know what? We'll skip saying the genus name and we're just going to go with the species name because that stayed the same through time, Megalodon. All right, so kind of cool. And this is the really funny killer thing about it is the arguments over what, what species of shark or what family of sharks this Megalodon belongs to really has to do with the tooth and the serrations along the sides of the tooth. Right? So, great white sharks today, they have big little serrations on their teeth when, and they, when they're small, and as they dump teeth and they get bigger, the teeth get serrations that get a little bit smaller. With Megalodon, all of the teeth, from small ones to giant ones, have very tiny serrations on them. This seems to be very important in deciding what genus should Megalodon belong to. So. Most recently, um, we think the genus belong, or the species belongs to the genus Otodus, which is an ancient shark species, uh, very large sharks. And Megalodon shows up in the Miocene, all right? So there were some big sharks in the Cretaceous and that survived the big mass extinction. And this genus Otodus got some very large species that culminated in the species Megalodon. So, what's cool about Megalodon? It's a giant. We see this very cool large jaw here that you could easily swim in and out of. This is a medium-sized 
megalodon jaw, it's not huge, right? So there's lots of bigger ones. But you can see that there's very large teeth and they come in rows and rows and they fall out all the time. One of the things that I find fascinating is that most, um, when people look at megalodon teeth, there's a side that's got, that's really flat and then a side that's got a curve shape to it. What's fascinating that um, I didn't even know for a long time is that it's the flat side is the part that faces out when you look at its, its smile and its little pearly whites. It's, but the side that faces back towards the gullet is the side that is always shown to you when you put it on a table. You put the flat side down so everybody sees the rounded side, the convex side. That's always the side I assumed was out facing forward, but it's not. It's the other way around, which is kind of cool. So what did a megalodon eat? The first question, answer could be anything it wanted, but in reality, megalodons ate um, mostly whales, right? So uh, in the Miocene, we started getting lots of whales in the oceans, and some of, we started to get some of the first ones that were sort of baleen whales, that were um, sort of, we call mysticete whales, as opposed to the toothed whales, um, like dolphins and orcas, and uh, sperm whales. So whales were not giant as blue whales yet, but we had lots of big whales, and they were just the right size for a megalodon to eat. Um, they were really the top predator. There was only one other predator that actually rivaled the megalodon, and that was um, an ancient sperm whale. Now, it's kind of funny because sperm whales today, we know, take a dive and they, they sort of sink to, down into the depths, where then they'll go around and try to eat a giant squid or two, and then mosey their way back up to the surface. But back in the day, early sperm whales ate other whales. So it's really the Leviathan, which is kind of the, the funny name, but, uh, but those beasts were competitors with the Megalodon for eating other whales. So a giant whale eating shark, that's kind of cool. But it also leads us to some other interesting things, which is you know, we see that Megalodon showed up around 20 some million years ago, 24 million years ago, and it went extinct uh, about 3 million years ago, we think. Okay. No, it went extinct 3 million years ago. So the question is, how do we know it went extinct? Well, we, there's not any around today. We don't find any teeth that are any younger, right? Megalodon teeth are found all over the world. You can find them in Africa, in South America, in North America, on both coasts. Um, you can find them pretty much all over the globe. They were everywhere hunting whales. So after about three million years, we don't find any more teeth. So there's lots of records of a million years ago, 500,000 years ago, we don't find any teeth. So that's evidence that they're extinct. Also, um, we don't see them today, right? A shark this big would be hard to hide from all of the ships and people going all over the, the world. And so if you watch the Meg, the whole thing is, oh, they're living deep down in the Marianas Trench. And it's, it's a kind of a cool little almost conspiracy theory kind of thing. But the problem is these guys are giant and they eat whales. Where do whales live? They don't live deep down in the Marianas Trench. Their food has to breathe air. So all the whales are at the surface. So if you're going to have a megalodon around, it's going to have to be at the surface where all of its prey is. And if you go that deep down into the oceans, there's just nothing down there that's abundant enough and large enough for a megalodon to eat. And to keep a whole population, not just one, but a whole population, because a megalodon does not survive for millions of years on its own. You've got to have a whole living population. So, unfortunately, 
maybe fortunately, megalodons are extinct. Um, but one of the things that I also think is really cool is that this is something that I know none of you guys really knew about, but megalodons were really actually very fond of, they, they, they knew that sports was going to become a big thing, right? And that most megalodons, see these teeth, they look like they're just plain colored, but most of them were green and yellow. I don't know if you knew it, but megalodons were really Packers fans. So here's your mega tooth or megalodon tooth. And I just happen to have a cast made of our actual real megalodon tooth um, that we have here at the museum. I had a cast made and yeah, had it painted green and yellow, customized. So megalodons are Packer fans. All right, anyway, I just thought it'd be kind of fun to talk with you a little bit about the cool history of megalodon and their big Packer fandom. So. Anyway, we appreciate you joining us here on A New Way to Museum. Uh, we'll see you again next Thursday. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for joining us in A New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.